Hey everybody, it's Mike here, that reseller guy, back to you with another video today. Yeah, you might not have seen me in an actual recorded video on this channel for a while. I've done a couple of lives recently, so I put those out there. And my uh, What Sold video this week, one of my That Card Guy channel. So if you're not following me over there, go on That Card Guy channel as well. And I do that sometimes when I have a lot of card sales or predominantly card sales over the weekend and not as much thrifted stuff. So I'll throw my what sold for the weekend over on that card guy. So uh, make sure you're checking both channels out. Uh, you know that other channel's getting close to a thousand. So go, go help that channel out too. Subscribe there. I'd appreciate it. Let's get going. All right, today's not quite as exciting for sales. Uh, I only sold four items, but the dollar amount was decent. It was about 200 bucks, maybe like 225, I think with all the shipping and everything. Uh, a couple smaller items and a couple more expensive items, but it's still sports card related for the most part. I'll show you the one non-sports card item. Actually, before I get into sales, I went to an estate sale this morning. I actually set my alarm for like 6.10 this morning to get up to go to an estate sale. Luckily, it turned out pretty good. I'll show you those items at the end of the video. But what I wanna talk about first is a little situation that I ran into the other day at a Goodwill. I brought up a, a few different little points that uh, I wanna ask what you guys would do, how you would react to these uh, situations. And uh, So I was taking in a few items to donate. Just, I donate some items to a little local charity uh, thrift store. So when I have like, better items, I take them there. I figure they're doing good in the community and I would rather give my good donations there and the stuff that's not quite as good, I will take to Goodwill. So that's what I was doing this particular day, I was taking some stuff that not really worth a whole lot, but just stuff that I wanted to get rid of. I don't even remember what it was at this point. But someone was walking past me on the sidewalk and they saw that I was carrying these bags and he stopped and he said, are you donating those? I'm like, yeah. he's like, can I have that item? And the funny thing was is now, as I'm trying to think back, I don't even really remember what the item was. And I said, I said, no, I'm just gonna go ahead and go inside it and donate them in there. I'm sure they'll put it out in a couple of days if you wanna to try to buy it or something. It was kind of strange and uh, he had kind of broken English, so we weren't communicating real well anyway. Uh, so yeah, what, first off, what would you have done in that situation? Would you have just taken the item and given it to him? I don't even remember what he asked for. Uh, wow, I can't remember what it was, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, I still took the items in and just put the items in the bin and donated them. So that brings me to my next point. So first off, yeah, what would you do in that situation? Second, you've all walked inside the, the Goodwill store or any thrift store and they have their donation bin and you, you always, at least I always, take a little glance inside. What are people bringing inside? What is donating? And every once in a while, you'll see something in there that's kind of cool or something you want, or maybe you just want to pick through it, see what someone, someone went in there. So have you ever been tempted to take an item out of there, or have you taken an item out of the bin, taken it to the front and say, hey, can you price this for me? I've heard of people doing that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There's definitely wrong with someone who's just taking an item out of the bin and just taking it. But uh, have you ever gone in, taken an item out of the donation bin, and taken it to the cashier or one of the workers at the store and asked them if they go ahead and price it for you? Because most of the times here that I've tried that, uh, I have tried it, they say they'll have it out the next day. They actually have to process it. So. Uh, I've never never succeeded in getting an item out of the donation bin and priced that same day. So what would you do in that situation? Yeah, I'm just kind of curious uh, about that. And that brings me to a third point along with this. How you going, Mike, just show me the sale. Show me what you got at the estate sale. No, no, we're talking today. Uh, the last thing was is I made a mistake one day. So uh, I was going to donate some items. I had a box in my front seat that I was going to donate. I stopped at the post office first and I picked up some packages and I set them on the seat, but I didn't really think about it. And I put them inside the donation box, went to the Goodwill, took the donation box, went and dumped it off, went, did my other errands. Actually, I think I met somebody for lunch. I went home and then I go, where's my cards? And I was like, oh bleep, yeah. They were in that box that I put in the donation bin. So you see how this is coming full circle? So I went inside the store. Luckily, they hadn't taken that bin to the back yet. So I saw that my box was still in there. I pulled out, there was a couple bubble mailers that had cards in it and I just left. So if it looked like to the store people that I walked in, went to the bin, grabbed those items and just left like I was just taking something for free. I, that's what it looked like. I wasn't, it was my stuff. But yeah, it was kind of a funny situation. So if you got any stories like that, tell me down in the comments. Let me know how you'd react to these different different scenarios. All right, now let's get into what sold. Sold four items, 200, I just looked 235 bucks with all the shipping and tax and all that stuff in the total. Uh, first up is I have some stickers. There's just a big lot of stickers here. These are all like surfboarding related stickers. So you have different stores, different brands, different stuff like that. This came from an estate sale. Yeah, it was about 
three, four weeks ago now that I went out to a state sale, it was pretty far away from me. It's probably like 30 miles away from me. I usually don't go ones that far away unless it was pretty good. They're actually having that sale again, like the second part of it today. Uh, I'm not driving out there this time. Uh, but anyway, so there was one particular bag that I bought that was $5 that had a bunch of stuff in it and uh, had a ton of stickers. And that's kind of why I bought it. Uh, there's also some little Nintendo trading cards. I actually sold one of those cards already for, I think, $10 earlier this week. I'll throw a picture of that right here, maybe. Uh, but these stickers were, were in there, and I did a bunch of different lots. Uh, so this particular lot sold for 20 bucks. I have another lot that's more like skateboarding stuff, I think, uh, board sports. That's uh, another 20 bucks and a few that I listed individually. So that little $5 bag is probably going to turn into... 150 ish dollars i think when all said and done so it's gonna be pretty good but uh, yeah first off stickers 20 bucks next one individual little baseball card now i haven't talked about this channel i did on my that card guy channel when i did my videos i actually flew up with a buddy up to colorado we went up there for a sports card show that was up just outside denver in aurora colorado uh, we stayed there for one night so we flew in friday morning stayed overnight Flew back Saturday night, so we hit the show for two days, and I didn't do nearly as much buying as I was hoping I would do up there, but it's still turning out. I think it'll be a, be a profitable trip, just not quite as profitable as I was hoping for, but uh, I think I've sold seven or eight cards from that trip already. Here's another one. This is a Ron Dane. Yeah, Ron Dane was pretty good for a couple of years, had a really great college career. This is his 2000 Tops Chrome rookie card. It is serial numbered on the back right there. These, these cards are getting... Harder to find these Topps Chrome from this year. Uh, this sold for 10 bucks. Yeah, I picked it up for a dollar at the show, sold for $10 plus shipping. It's gonna go out eBay standard envelope since it's under that $20 threshold. Ship it out for 60 cents. Some of the other stuff that I bought at the show uh, was just bulk cards. And what I mean bulk cards is I'm going through boxes that are quarter boxes, 50 cent boxes, dollar boxes. I'm just pulling a bunch of stuff out. And there was one box there that I paid about 75 cents per card. And I think I bought like 40 some autograph cards like these were all baseball autographs and they're just they're kind of nobody guys guys that sell for a dollar dollar fifty maybe two dollars on a good day a lot of these off brands like leaf you got this one you got some of these best autographs here in the back and a bunch of bowman chrome guys of nobody that ever really made it into the major so what i do with these is i bulk lot them up and i sell them for about a buck and a quarter a card just kind of depending in this case there was 60 cards and i priced it at 70 dollars. so let's do the math i think that was at like a dollar 12 that's kind of the math i'm doing in my head so we got 69.99 divided by 60 cards a dollar 16.65 so a dollar 16 and a half cents per card. And for a lot of them, I paid 75 cents. Some others I probably picked up for a quarter, for a dime, that type of stuff in different uh, collections or other boxes that I bought out of. But either way, I sold these for 70 bucks, not making a ton on these, but it's turning some money. Let's say I'm making 50 cents a card, just since I know I paid 75 cents a card for each of these, then I'd be making $30 on this $70 lot, which still isn't too bad when it's just cards that uh, I'm picking up for cheap at these card shows. One other card thing is right over here. I'm not going to go completely off camera. I'm not going to show all these just because I got a couple of them over here. These Topps baseball card sets. These are called like the holiday boxes or Christmas boxes because they put these into Target. Uh, traditionally, back then, they did it like towards Christmas time. That's why they call them the Christmas boxes. And uh, you bought these because they looked really nice. You can buy all the different years. That's 1991. Here's 1989. And in this case, I did four different years. I think it's 19... 88, 89, 90, 91. I did all four of those sets and I made one bundle and I made it 89.99 plus shipping. So that's 22.50 per set. Generally, if I'm putting these in my collectibles booth, I put them in there for 25 for most of these Topps factory sets like this. Maybe this 1991, I probably could have got like 34, but I have a, a little overstock of Topps sets right now. So I figured I'd go ahead and throw one lot out on eBay. And they generally sell pretty good when you put like those four of them together, 80, 90 bucks, somewhere in that range, you'll get the sale. I did charge 20 bucks for shipping. It's going back to New York. It's, it's The box itself isn't going to be huge, but it's definitely going to be pretty heavy. Each one of these sets is probably like six, seven pounds, maybe more. I don't know. Let's weigh one. How much does one of these top sets weigh? Put in your guesses below. All right. I know none of you are going to put a guess below, but you know, I'm just saying that. Think in your head. How much does this, how much does this box weigh? 792 cards weighs... 
three pounds, seven ounces. A lot less than I thought. It, this feels a lot heavier than three pounds, seven ounces. Let's see this one. Different one, different set. Does it weigh the same? Three pounds, nine ounces. So that one's a little bit more. So we'll just say each one weighs about four pounds. We got four of them. About 15, 16 pounds is what it's going to turn out to be when I get these all boxed up. Like I said, it's going to go UPS ground. I'm going to go back to New York and uh, $90 plus shipping. How much did I pay? I paid $10 a set for these. So that was it. Four sales, 235 bucks. Not too hard to get these items shipped up. I'll probably have to custom box, make a little Franken box for these top sets. Make sure that they don't get damaged during shipping. But I definitely want the box to be as small as possible because like I said, it is going from Arizona. Let's see, which way is New York? That way. All right, so that's it for the sales. That's it for my scenarios. Let's check out what I got at this estate sale. Why did I wake up at six o'clock? Well, this house was over in uh, an area called the Lakes in Tempe, which way back in the day used to be like the really expensive homes that were built. Now they're getting a little bit run down, not quite as uh, luxurious of a neighborhood, but a lot of people have lived there for a long time. And you could tell by the pictures for this estate sale that this person had been there a long time. Lots of vintage stuff in this house. House looks like it's never been updated over the last 40 years or whatever, however long it's been since these houses were built. Uh, and there was some cool stuff there. So I got there about half an hour before it opened and there was probably at least 15 people in front of me already. I did not expect that. I figured I'd be in like the top 10, but there were like 15 people in front of me. And I talked to one guy in line uh, as we're waiting and he's like, he's like, I bet half these people are here for one particular item. And I'm like, I'm like, it's possible. You see the preview pictures. You could actually even see the price tags in the preview pictures for this sale. There was one item in the kitchen. It was like a vintage Sears, uh, like mushroom spice rack thing. I looked it up. They sell for like 150, 170 bucks if they're complete. Now this was missing one of the little mushroom uh, shakers, I guess if you want to call it that. Uh, but yeah, they had a price of 20 bucks. So uh, I followed the guy in front of me into the kitchen. He tried to grab it. They said it was already sold. Yeah, we knew that was it and that everybody was headed for. Uh, so I hit, hit out the rest of the house. There was a couple other items that I spotted in the pictures I was interested in. And that was this one right here. And I got it. Boom. Football helmets. I know. I know. It's always about football. Well, look at this. They left the mouthpiece on this thing. How old is this? These helmets were made in like the 80s. How much would you pay me to put this mouthpiece in my mouth? I ain't doing that. Come on. Uh, but yeah, this was priced at $8 for this helmet. This is a Bike Air 4 helmet. Uh, pre actually pretty good shape inside for how the outside is. I will clean this up. I'll use the magic eraser, get some of the dust, uh, dirt, and some of the little uh, paint transfer from other helmets. But inside, this is probably one of the nicest looking air helmets I've bought in a long time. Probably 80 to 90 bucks for this helmet. Yeah, 80, 90 bucks and I paid 80 bucks for it. That's why I was interested in getting there quick because the people that are there early they're usually not interested in sporting goods. They're there for the clothes and for the vintage other stuff that was there. So I will cut this off and throw this part off. It does have its original chin strap, which is pretty cool. This is a bike air helmet as well, bike. So when you see the bike ones, you know it's older than the ones that are shut or some of the other brands. But uh, yeah, that was a great pickup. That alone is going to pay for everything I paid. I think $46 for everything there. So that's pretty good. I almost double my money just on this one sale. Got a couple other things right here. Now, if you're not from Phoenix, you don't know, probably don't know who the Roadrunners are. They were our minor league hockey team back in the day. They started in the, I think the seventies. And when I first moved out to Arizona, I played hockey. I'm from New York. So uh, we used to go to a lot of Roadrunners games. I'd go to some training camps that they had, did, did a bunch of other stuff. So Roadrunners had a had a very uh, fond part of my youth and my memory. So uh, it was really cool to find these, these old Roadrunners Pepsi giveaway hockey sticks. They say H and B, which I believe is Hillary and, and that's how it's pronounced and Bradsby, if they made these. Uh, on the other side, it said, see if I can do this, has Ice Palace Louisville Slugger. Yeah, so that H and B is uh, Hillary and Bradsby uh, made in Canada. It's like a souvenir size stick. So this isn't a stick that you would actually play with. This was probably done on like stick giveaway night or something. They did a lot of that stuff back in the day and they had one, two of these sticks and they were only five bucks a piece. Now I will probably have to list these on eBay to get a good price. I don't know if I could sell them in my collectibles booth, uh, to get the right price. I don't know what they're going to sell for. They were five bucks each. I don't know, 30 to $50 is probably my guess. Uh, you know, you'd have to find the right, right buyer for something like this. All right, so I've got a few more items next. Another local thing, Arizona State ASU 
uh, so with Sparky. That's the big thing is that it has Sparky on this pendant. Now it does have pinholes in the corner. This was actually still stuck up on the wall and it has spider webs and dirt and I didn't change it. It is yellowed. It just smells dusty. It's not like smoke. Yeah, I smelled it. Uh, I don't know if you can clean pendant. So that's something that I'm going to look up actually, see if I can get this whiter than this, than it uh, is at the moment. Uh, See if I can get this cleaned up a little bit. I paid three dollars for this. I don't think I'm gonna sell it. I have a little pennant wall over there, and I actually don't have any ASU pennants right now. I have Roadrunners, Bills, Sabers, and Suns over there. That's all I got right now. So I'd love to add a vintage ASU one there as well. Definitely got a spot for it. So I'll get this cleaned up and figure out if I were to sell it. I honestly don't really know. I don't know if it's a twenty, twenty-five, thirty-dollar pennant. Probably somewhere in there. Uh, I'm guessing it's from the same range as everything else, probably 70s to 80s. All right, the last items. I bought some clothes. Don't buy a lot of clothes, but I'm actually surprised that these were still there because a lot of people were hitting the vintage clothes. The story with this estate sale, uh, the guy that had the sale or the company that had the sale said that I'm assuming the guy passed away recently, but his wife passed away like 30 years ago and he didn't get rid of any of her stuff. So there was a lot of vintage clothing there, both women's mainly women's vintage clothing, a little bit of guys, uh, and people were just making big old piles of the stuff. So I don't know how this stuff was still sitting there when I got to the clothes, but uh, it was. So let's show you this one first, another uh, Arizona item. This one is on a vintage home team advantage tag, and it's an Arizona Cardinals. So originally we were the Phoenix Cardinals, and then they switched it to Arizona Cardinals. So you can kind of date things that way, but this one's easy to date. 1994 official schedule. So we're going to say this is from 1994. And on the back, you got the full schedule of all the teams that they're going to play. Now, this shirt looks like it's never been worn. I can't sell it as new because it has no tags, but I paid $5 for the shirt. Originally, she was going to charge me 10 because she said all the vintage clothing was 10, but this one didn't have any tags on it. So we agreed upon five bucks. I think that's a pretty good deal. I'm guessing... 25, 30 bucks, somewhere in there. I, I'd probably list it at 30. Maybe there's a, a Cardinals fan out there that will pay me that much for it. But these two shirts, I think, are going to be the gems of the group here. Now, unfortunately, it's the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I say unfortunately because I'm a Cardinals fan, and we don't like the Cowboys. I think you have a love-hate thing with the Cowboys. But the good thing is, it's the Cowboys, and the Cowboys sell. Uh, but yeah, this is a uh, just a great shirt, great spell out. You got the helmet on there, and look, brand new with tags. It is on the vintage Screen Star. Can you see it? The Screen Stars tag, and right here it is Trench brand. So brand new with the tags. Originally they paid fifteen dollars and ninety nine cents for it. But yeah, nothing on the back. Brand new with tags. One, two of these shirts, exact same thing. It is a size large. So yeah, 10 bucks a piece for these two cowboy shirts. I haven't checked the comps at all. I don't know. Is it a $30 shirt? Is it a $50 shirt? I'm guessing probably because it's from the 90s would be, you know what? Let's look it up. All right. When I go in and just type in trench Dallas Cowboys shirt, 378 results. So there is a lot of trench product out there. And just looking at the used ones are like right away, 25, $20, $10. So they're kind of all over the place. So we're going to click on new. I don't know how this is possible because it says there's 378 listings, but when I go to new, it says there's 6,500 listings. I don't know. Maybe uh, there's some newer trench brand stuff out there, but I'm seeing a newer one, 1994 dated. It shows $30. There's a tank top for $25. I'm looking to see if I can see like this exact one. Like people are asking $25, $70, $60. Let's go look at the solds because that's what we all know. We got to look at the comps, the sold comps. Only nine sold, so not a lot of these are sold. And I'm trying to find anything that looks even close to this, and it's not. The only thing really sold is some V-neck women's shirt with some lady with her jugs hanging out of the shirt. So I think that's why that one's selling. But not a lot of these shirts sold. So yeah, unfortunately, there's not a lot of great history with, with this trench brand and what I see out there. A lot of the stuff look was actually newer that I was seeing that was sold and available. Uh, I'm going to throw them out there at 40 bucks. I think that's the right price, $40. Football season's not too far away, and uh, hopefully uh, they'll sell. Uh, worst case is somebody sends me an offer, but I think at 10 bucks, brand new, vintage shirt, mid-90s probably, I think that's a good deal too.
All right, that's it. That's it for today. Thanks everybody for watching. What is today? Today is Wednesday. Today's what? No, today is Thursday as I'm doing this video. I'm, it's later in the week. I'm actually going on vacation next week, so I'm going to be gone for like six days. I don't know what my video situation is going to be while we're gone, whether we're going to go out thrifting, check some stuff out. I may post some stuff out here. It might just be a short. So uh, if you don't ever go to my shorts tab, go check that out. Go see the videos I've been putting out on there. There's a few there as well. Uh, otherwise, go to that card guy. Check those videos out. Subscribe. All that stuff and uh have a great fourth of july because that's what we're going out of town for trying to it's like 115 here in arizona right now and we need to get out of town because i'm not ready for this heat all right that's it thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time